So along with Colin and Megan, uh, uh, we've been crafting the problem about collaborative innovation spaces. And um, the impetus, I think, for the problem uh, in, a, in a big picture sense was the re recognition and realization of many of you know that this idea of physical locations <coughs> where people come together and innovate, whether it's to build technology or to build applications or share ideas or become entrepreneurs, um, is it has exploded, certainly around this community. Harvard has the Innovation Lab, obviously across the river at the Harvard Business School. WBUR Radio in town has its own iLab. There's a plethora of innovation spaces, hacker spaces, maker spaces all around Boston, all around the country now that are populated by people who are um, going there with varying levels of sort of program, pedagogy, you know, expectation, evaluation from the top down at these places and doing innovative building. And I think the goal of our project, along with our team, will be to um, do a couple of things. One is to sort of take a big picture look at this, uh, this space across the, the various kinds of spaces, some of which I just mentioned. There are these kinds of spaces that are affiliated with um, venture capital companies. They have a very particular interest in funding projects that are going to come out and make money and be successful businesses. There are innovation spaces affiliated with universities, obviously here at Harvard and, and, and you know, every major university is developing one of these now. They have a very different set of goals and probably a very different set of ideas about how they evaluate success. You know, they probably, I think it's fair to say, and we'll talk to the uh, folks extensively, I think as part of our project, that they view themselves have a, having a teaching mission and a pedagogical mission, um, separate and apart from whether a particular project emerges from the ILAB and makes tons of money and gets a, gets a, a venture round of funding. Um, independent sort of hacker spaces, maker spaces around town probably have their own set of considerations, but they're all bumping up against some of the same core sets of issues, again, relating to pedagogy, evaluation, metrics of success. Um, I'm a lawyer, so I come at this and see immediately legal issues, including intellectual property issues around getting people together and hatching out ideas and, and making sure that intellectual property um, concerns are being addressed. And I think the goal of our project is to take this look across all of these disciplines, identify commonalities, and really, frankly, make sure that these different folks in these different circles are learning from each other. Right. Yeah, I like close. to think of it as making sense of the sexy, which is innovation. Yep. Yeah, and the only uh, qualification that I would add to the sense of the sexy, um, <laughs> uh, no comment on that, uh, or, and what Chris said, is that um, as much as we're talking about innovation spaces in these different venues around the Boston area, I'm hugely interested in what it means internationally. Yep. So if you look at, in Africa, for instance, I think there's some, you know, 45, 50 mm -hmm. iLabs, iHubs, all different kinds of uh, things like that that are cropping up. Um, precisely because they don't have the same kinds of resources typically in universities that we have here. And if you talk to someone who's running one, they'll say, what should I be doing? How do I know if I'm making progress? How can I think about this? How can I learn from these other spaces? So i just like to further expand the rather large frame that Chris put out there and say that we're really open to kind of looking at all these different venues and figuring out how, we'll obviously have to scope it to some extent, but figuring out what can we learn from these different communities and how can they uh, learn from and work with each other to do more than that.